Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to In Bed With, well, with me, your host for tonight, Jack Norman. We've got some special treats this evening for all our football fanatics, X Factor fans, and even our wannabe Stormzies out there. But that's enough chit chat for now. Let's get this show on the road. Welcome again. How are we all doing tonight? As you can see, this is my house and I will be dragging guests into bed with me. Nothing naughty, just a good old chat. We will even have some singing in the shower, hopefully better than mine, from the amazing Manda Seal. What an exciting night ahead of us. This week in the world of news has been a busy one, don't you agree? So it's been told that one in six Britons will live to 100. Well, with how the speed of Brexit is going, at least one of us will be alive to witness it. <laughs> so a time traveller has warned us of an alien invasion on Earth. I mean, who wouldn't want to be controlled by aliens? It certainly beats some of the world leaders at the moment. <laughs> and this weather, I mean, one minute it's a massive heat wave and the next is torrential rain. Our weather is unpredictable, just like Trump. We expect something good, but in the end, we are always disappointed. <laughs> oh, and is anyone else excited about the royal wedding? Woo! No, didn't think so. <laughs> Lastly, great to see Kim Jong-un and Mu Jae-in becoming friends last week. I can only hope that this new friendship will last longer than England do in the World Cup. <laughs> well, that's enough boring news for now. I think it's time to introduce our first guest of the evening. Our British hearts will always hold love for the sport of football. Do we have any MK Dons fans in the house? <laughs> well, my first guest is one of the Milton Keynes Dons pre-academy coaches. He coaches voluntarily and has recently set up a very special football project. Ladies and gentlemen, time to get in bed with my first guest of the evening, Mr. Wesley McGrath! <laughs> Wes, how you doing, man? Good, nice to see you. Please, sit down on my bed. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Wesley. No, not a problem, not a problem. How are you feeling today? Yeah, feeling good, feeling good. Can't Excellent. wait. Thank you so much for coming on. That's right, no worries. So I would like to talk to you a bit about your beginnings in football. Um, yeah, of course. So, you know, I was like many young kids, just wanted to be a professional footballer, I think. Um, you know, sadly for me, it, it didn't quite work out. And through one reason or another, you know, it could have been my height or my physique or whatever. Um, and then found uh, another passion uh, which was coaching, really. So, yeah, that's it. So, honest. that's how that transition went. So, you gave football a go? Yeah, you know, like I say, playing sort of junior football, even had a stint in MK Dons, which is quite funny as, a, as an academy player. It's kind of funny now that I work for them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had that. Um, but, yeah, just sort of found that, like I said, for, for one reason or another, it just wasn't working out. So, tried to think of something else that would, that would give me sort of an interest and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I was lucky that it was coaching. Because in a way, you're kind of like giving back, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I feel like I have quite a good knowledge of, of football as it is. Um, and that was something that I wanted to do, you know, try and pass that knowledge on to, to younger kids and almost like the next generation of footballers coming through. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great and wonderful feeling when you see uh, a player take on a bit of advice or, you know, you teach them a skill or whatnot and then they go and execute it. For me, there's, there's some, not much sort of better sights, really. Yeah. So, elaborate on that, you've got, um, you set up a special project. Yes, yes I have, um, WM32 Football, um, come out of university and, uh, and whatnot, and it was a plan of mine to do anyway, um, but, you know, for me it was just a case of timing, um, so, yeah, I do, I, was, I went to uni, studied sports business and sports coaching at, uh, at UCFB, um, but then within that, I did some talent identification stuff. Um, I did some, so that means I was like scouting and whatnot. Uh, did a performance analysis course as well, funnily enough, which was 
around the corner here in Luton. Um, and yeah, just wanted to give myself a, a platform to showcase my, my talents, I suppose. Have you um, have you found any future stars? Do you think? Uh, don't want to don't want to predict. Yeah, um, yeah, fair enough. Because you know football is can be cruel. Yeah. Um, as I know firsthand. So, yeah, but no, there is some. There like Milton Keynes especially has a an array of talent um, and a massive talent pool, and I don't think it's it's been tapped into just yet. I think you know obviously with uh, Delhi Ali and you know Brendan Galloway yeah. and, and people like this. Um, you know they've sort of put Milton Keynes on the map um, a little bit, especially Delhi. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's more there. Um, we just need to sort of tap into it a little bit more. Because um, you do quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching yes, as well. Yes, yes I do, yeah. So that's brilliant. Um, you know, I, I love it. Uh, you know, taking a part of someone's game and working on that um, is, is brilliant. You know, I did a one-to-one -one, uh, on Bank Holiday Monday, actually, and. Uh, one of the players, he's a, he's a midfield player, so I sort of break down what he needs to do. Um, so that's his scanning, his receiving and his passing. And, you know, I've worked with him on that. And um, But his attention to detail is, is nothing, yeah. is, is something that I've never seen in, in a young player before. It's relentless. He's constantly all the time wanting to improve and wanting to get better. And, you know, as a coach, that's what you want, you know, mm. because it shows he's got a hunger and a desire yeah. to to make it, um, but then it also challenges you because you're having to watch everybody else in the session, but then you've got to keep an eye out on him to make, him, to make sure he's doing the right things as well. Because I guess one-on-one, -on -one you can really finally tune into those yeah, details. Yeah, like. definitely. You know, I see quite a few of these people on like Instagram especially, and they get all the equipment out, and, and they do like loads of other bits and pieces, but um, it's not, for me, when I watch it, I think, yeah, it has a relevance to what they want to do, but it's not relevant to the actual game. So yeah. I think, well, what's the point in doing it if it's not relevant to, you know, when they go play on a Saturday or a Sunday? Um, so, yeah, I think I got a little bit frustrated with that as well. Mm. So, yeah, giving myself that platform to be able to do it is, and showcase people what I do um, is, is good as well, I think. And um, so what are you up to at the moment? Do you have an, uh, uh, anything At the like moment, that, I've... Um, not long. I'm due to start a new job, actually. Okay, um, tell us a bit about that. So it's with a company called footballforfootball.com. Yeah. And what they do is they, they are a free online resource for football. Um, so what we're trying to do is bridge the gap from the elite game and the grassroots game, bring it closer together. Um, so we want to get the grassroots guys educated better. Yeah. Um, so when they, and if they do make that step up into the elite game, then they're better informed from that. But, and the way we're going to do it is we get people that are currently in football from like the very, very top. Um, and they just talk about their experiences oh. um, in an interview style. And then we break down the interview into like an article format or, or whatnot. Um, and then we might link it back to one of the other parts of the website um, and just go from there really. But yeah, it's, it's something that I did as an intern at university and it was one of the very, I think you don't get that wow mm. very often in life. And yeah. But that was something that every single time, you know, if I travel in or just meet up with the boss, that it was I got a wow from. So when the opportunity came about, I had to take it really. Exactly. Yeah. And um, just going off football real quick. Okay. I heard you're you're quite keen on rap music. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I do like a bit of a uh, bit of rap, bit of grime and, and whatnot. So yeah, I've been to managed to be in, go to a few concerts and whatnot. Um, funnily enough, it was sort of around this time last year I went to maybe sort of four or five in a period of about six weeks, uh, which, was quite, which was quite good. Is that so it's more of a hobby thing? For yeah, you, more yeah. of a hobby as opposed to me sort of singing and spitting bars and, and whatnot. So, yeah, but it's something that I love and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Well, Wesley, wait for this. I'm sure you guys are just as crazy about rap like Wesley is over here. I heard he's so good that Stormzy wants his bars back. As the rap scene is pretty big right now, we thought we'd surprise you all with a special game. As we are not as big as James Corden in his carpool karaoke, we've decided to do our own version called Rappin' Revs. <laughs> we sent out our taxi driver, Hal, to take our special guests around for a spin. Let's take a look and see what went down. So today I'm gonna to be starting a new thing where I grab passengers from around the area of Luton and I challenge them to a rap battle. Now, I've got a few topics in my head. Uh, controversial ones, at the most. Like Trump, uh, Brexit, uh, racism, uh. Yo, what's up? Oh, it's proper, like, cold. 
Yeah, it's it is. It's been cold forever. Um, right, so I need to get to, uh, it's called the Fox and Hounds. Oh yeah? So it's the bar there, so it's maybe yeah, pretty can... near, apparently, I don't know. Um, don't yeah, yeah. Too well. um, nice one, man. Have you been doing this for a long time, or? Actually, no, it's a new job. Oh yeah? Yeah. Um, because I've, I've started doing rapping as well. So you got, um... Got pressure, you got any bars, like, or any rhymes to spit, or? Yeah, I got bars, I got yeah. bars, I got a few. A rapping, like, cab driver, that's pretty cool. Huh? Um, so, we battle, okay? Is it gonna be sort of like, um... Well, I'm gonna diss you, you're gonna diss me, we're gonna get personal here. No, nah, no, nah, nothing personal, mate. Nah. Like a topic. You topic, know? okay. That's fair enough. How about the weather? I don't know, it's a bit dull. What about Trump? He's been on the radio yeah. a lot. Trump, yeah, yeah, Trump. So, despite all the negative press, coffee. <laughs> this man's a twit crapping out his tweets, and that's not his best bits. He's been doing this for weeks. 31st of May, that was 2017, World Tobacco Day, I think we're being too mean. Tobacco, something more like wacko. Maybe he smoked too much because he legalized pot. Now that's safe to touch. I'm gonna name three famous Donalds. Duck and Trump! So that's three famous Donalds Duck, King, and Trump. One is Disney, the other reported boxing. The third one said that fake news is a fox team, along with ABC, Time Magazine, New York Times, Huffington Post, Sky News, CNN, Twitter finger in again, King Yong Un, better listen in, the rocket man. And it's nothing in my pocket, man. Getting blown by Stormy Daniel, strangled in a star spangled, scandal in my staff handle, scheming in a dark angle. Free speech, I'm never choking. Of Argus, I'm soaking. Check me out, home alone, too joking. My Cody Coking. Down the hall and to the left. That film was pretty cool. And I'm not here to ridicule. Critical, I stay political without being cynical. So, D to the Dizzle, T to the Trisse. Pierce Morgan is literally a human bid, eh? And what the Ra and espionage and Russian spies are better. Start shooting. Where's the proof on? There it lies a little. Moscow dedication and Boris mitigation and Trump's waiting for his royal wedding invitation. So him and Prince Philip can have a burping contest. Compare Meghan Merkel's breast with Catherine's. Who's best? I'm an anarchist. Don't be mad at this. I'm also a pacifist. Taking the back to when he closed line, Vince McMahon shaved his hair off and Stone Cold raised his right arm. Lennox Lewis got fired. Gene Simmons got fired. At the end of The Apprentice, Piers Morgan got hired. Recurring theme there. Oh, yeah. And regarding this fair, uh, don't charge me like a Mexican bull. I'll Mexican wave at a Mexican wall. Eat Mexican food, have a Mexican standoff. And just like Ronnie Jackson standoff, Blakey. All politicians are snaky. And it's not just out there in the USA, because we got our own problems here in the UK. Corbyn's to the left, Theresa May's to the right, me standing in the middle knowing both are talking shit. Now that's more political satire than my man Ian Hislop. And that's where I'll retire. You can, uh, drop me off at this stop. Oh, okay. You good? Um, about your fare, I, um... Where off to? Uh, to the train station, please. Train station? Just about 10, 10 minutes away. Fill, fill the gap with a little rap battle. Well, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, you got well, bars? Why not? Um, yeah, I've got a little something. Let's go Brexit. Brexit, Brexit Theresa May, oh. all that. Well, who hasn't got anything to say about that? Uh. If we put it on the paper, it was written in the rain. First we were crazy, maybe now we are insane. In the beginning, yeah, we were playing all the games. All pleasantries on it. But it changed us, maimed us. Now nah, we're not the same. Living and growing, trying to do with all the change. The paper makes the planes, so you know we've got to fly away. But, me and my friends, we're still switching lanes. Rolling in our cars. Trying to get the money. Oh, maybe a bigger chain. But they're bringing down the hammer in their court of law. Maybe we're singing in the rain while they're watching behind window panes. Really? I'm no joke. I tried to tell you as it's true, but everybody's different, including me and you. Different needs and different wants is breaking Britain's back. 
and this whole damn kerfuffle means one of us will crack. Uh, driving through the nations, dividing as we go. First Brexit, then Brexit, then next, we'll never know. Article 50, whoop, we're nearly there. And with the new foreign price for... Let me just go past these traffic lights and then. Uh, oh! Ooh. Nearly got a red light. Just like Brexit. Yeah. Article 50. Woo! We're nearly there. And with the new price for fuel, you don't need to pay your fare. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, that went really well. I managed to get two two guys who would successfully rap with me. Um, and I lost both times. Anyway, back to you, Jacko, in the studio. Back to you. Well, Wesley, how did you find that? Yeah, it was quite interesting, to be fair, yeah. Have you ever spat some bars to get out of a fair? Uh, I can't say I have. I've probably sang along to a song that was in the car, but not nothing original, unfortunately. Well, I'm just going to say our special taxi driver, Hal, is sitting right over there. <laughs> if you have a little battle. Or we can leave it for another time. Leave it for another time, leave I think. Leave it for another time, fair enough. For Wesley, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Wesley McGrath! <laughs> right, after a quick word from our special sponsor, Dr. Ben's Water, we will be back with an X Factor star and a stunning performance from Manda Seal. Don't go anywhere! <laughs> Tired of drinking plain and boring tap water? No, I don't actually drink water. Wrong answer. Soda is no good for you, Jim. Doctors recommend you should drink at least five glasses of water daily. I recommend. I don't think that was a real doc. See this, Jim? This is the future of consuming liquids. I'm Dr. Ben, and this is my latest invention. I call it... The Dr. Ben's water. This water will not only change your life, it will also... Teach you how to play the guitar. Clean your house. Drive you to your destinations. Keep you warm. And much more. This water will have you screaming, H2, oh my god, how did I survive this long without this? That tastes like shit. Shih Tzu dogs included with every purchase of Dr. Ben's water. Get yours now in a shop near you. Availability is limited, only available on every 14th money of every third year for exactly 45 seconds. Does not actually include a Shih Tzu dog. If consumed, contact an ambulance immediately. Drinking this water may cause Alzheimer's disease, alcoholic liver disease, Gilbert syndrome, colour blindness, pink eye, sleep apnea, snoring, asthma, hepatitis B and C, cellulite, childhood obesity and depression. Dr. Ben's Water is a fictional company entirely made up for the purpose of money or laundering. Please do not contact us. Welcome back. Hope you're all feeling nice and refreshed from Dr. Ben's water, because it's certainly getting hot in here. We're all very familiar with that talent show that hits our screens every year, headed by the big man that is Simon Cowell. You know, I thought about auditioning for The X Factor once. Surely this quiff would be enough to get me through? I mean, it worked for Jedward, right? I've also got some moves, Simon. No? OK, fine. I'll leave the dancing to our next guest, shall I? This amazing entertainer and six chair challenge finalist has graced our screens with his charm and moves smoother than Michael Jackson. Hopefully he can swoon me in bed. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Russell Jones. <laughs> Russell, how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Thank you for coming today. Anytime. I know you've driven all the way from Wales to be here, so we really appreciate it. How was your journey? It was really good, yeah, yeah, had a really you. good journey. <laughs> nice. So, Russell, um, I'd like to ask you, how did you end up on X Factor? What was your musical journey leading up to that point? Um, I just had loads of my friends say, go for the show. Um, I've been singing for quite a few years, and they were like, I'll oh, just give it a go, you never know. And um, I went down to Swindon with my mum, my biggest fan. Yeah. She came along with me, and she went, just audition, just go for X Factor. So I, uh, I dressed up smart, I wore some tight trousers, put some dungaree braces on. Yeah. And um, I just thought I'd just go in there and just, just be me and, and, just, and just show the nation and show um, the world what I, um, what I can do with, with my style and my music. And 
Well, you obviously did something right that day, eh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so actually being on X Factor, what, what was that experience like? Oh, absolutely amazing. Oh, it must have been, huh? One of the best things I've ever done in my life. I met so many friends. Um, and it's opened the door to so many things as well. And um, I never thought that um, old school 40s jazz music would, would, would be out there now, you know? Yeah. People listening to that music and, and, and hearing it on the radio with different artists um, putting in their own little spin on it, Bruno Mars. Um, Michael Bublé, uh, Tony Bennett, and all these artists coming together with that old school vibe. Of so course. I thought, I want to enter X Factor and, and show the world and the nation what I can do. <laughs> and um, I've got to ask you, what was the six chair challenge like? That must have been pretty daunting, right? It was, yeah, it was, it was overwhelming, you know, going on a stage and seeing loads and loads and thousands of people and thinking, God, I've, I've come this far and got to this. And, and I never thought, you know, coming from a little small town in Wales, going to, to Wembley Arena, you know, that's a dream. Yeah. To, to get that far, you know, it is, it was mind blowing. It must have been, yeah, an unreal experience, as you say. And since, um, so after X Factor, you've been pretty busy with, um, with your own gigs, of course, yeah. but you've been also doing some special gigs around schools and old people's homes. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, please? I've been going into, um, into to special needs schools um, and, and just getting to the core of, of, of real people, you know, finding out what um, about their lives, um, autistic, um, dyspraxia, dyslexia, and just finding like um, the good in what they do, you know, and finding that you can achieve, achieve anything that you want to do in your life, you know. You, shouldn't, you should never let a special need get in the way. So I'll, I'll get up and sing a couple of couple of Jungle Book songs, yeah. um, some a couple of Disney songs. Because you mentioned dyslexia, that's something you suffer with. Yeah, yeah. And, and school was very hard, you know. A battle of when, when teachers would say that you're never going to go anywhere in your life, you know, you're not going to do anything. And um, to want to be a singer is, you know, they pretty much just laughed about it, really. Mm. And, and to, to have a dream and um, you, just, you just get knocked down for it. But um, I wanted to go into a school and and say, you know, you're, you're not on your own, you know, being yeah. through something like this is, is, is hard, but, but music is, is my release and it, yeah. it makes me happy, it makes me want to dance and move my legs and, great, and just have man. fun. Yeah. And you mentioned um, to all these kids that you go visit these schools, I think you've got a bit of a fan club, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I, think I think you brought something in for us to see today, that special gift that they made for you. So is that, for, <laughs> is that from the, the kids at the school? Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I, well, doing, this, doing the Jungle Book on the show, I never never realised that the Jungle Book would just go... Yeah. Would just so blow that's up, what like, that's come so from, from your song on the show. Let's, yeah, let's so... Uh, <laughs> so, and look, how lovely is that? And do you keep in touch with, with these kids? Yeah. They, have you, they, they are come, you a bit of a mentor to them, could you say? Or? They come to all the shows and I'll always get... I'll, um, I'll get them up on the stage and I'll get them singing as well. And if they've never... Um, if they're very shy to get up, I always want to get them involved, and you know I want to feel like everyone's in their living room instead yeah. of instead of directly singing singing at someone. I want to feel like, well, you want to connect like you're them, watching right? them. Yeah, you know you're watching them at home and you're having some fun. And yeah, it must be an amazing feeling. Yeah, so. it, it feels really good, and I feel like um, and it's just money money can't buy. You know, and you can get to someone and exactly. And it well, shouldn't be the motivator. Uh, yeah, it? it does. And so, what you've been up to apart from that? Have you got any of your your own gets coming up or playing some festivals? Yeah, I'm doing, a, I'm doing festivals all around the UK. I think we're just um, going from, we're starting in Wales and we're going all the way up to Yorkshire, uh, Manchester, London. We're just going to every little part and so many people that will message me and say, when you come in here, when you come into here and, I'm, and I want to visit every single city yeah. and just give a little bit of the Russell charm and, of course. and just get them singing and get <laughs> them involved. And, and um, I hear, heard a rumour you were doing a special single for Christmas. Is that right? It is, yeah. yeah I mean, tell us I mean, about that. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit with, with the GC, Gemma Collins. With Gemma Collins, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think we're just going to get in the studio, have some fun, a bit of flirting. The usual, or, right? And just, exactly. have, and just go with it and, just, and maybe just something off the cuff and whatever comes first to our heads and we'll yeah. just put it down and, and just record it instead of take after take and just do it. And, and it's for charity, right? Yeah, I think we're going to do it for NSPCC or, um, or maybe c cancer research or something that is close to my heart that I want to yeah. spread the word and, and raise a lot of money and just have fun. <laughs> and lastly, Russell, I've got to say, you're looking pretty dapper tonight. 
Is, um, is fashion something you've always been interested in? Yeah, I, I, t I take little things. I always want to put the modern twist on, you know, that I'm young. I want to wear no socks. Yeah. I want my feet to breathe. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and um, I just want to um, change styles. And like, I see people on the TV and I think, yeah, they, they look all right. But I, I just want to... Bring well, a bit of you in bring it, Bring right? a bit of them. Yeah. I think, you know, you should be never, never, never afraid to uh, express your, your fashion. Wear, wear coloured trousers. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. Bow ties, bring it all back, braces. Well, seeing as Russell is such a big X, X Factor fan and veteran, <laughs> I thought I would test his knowledge on past contestants. This is a little game we would like to call, Did They Have The X Factor? I will tell you four riddles about past contestants, and if you guess them right, there will be a treat in sight. If that sounds good, then let's get started with the first one. <laughs> Now, Russell, before I begin this, I must wear my Mr. Riddler's hat. I do like the hat. For dramatic like purposes. <laughs> OK. You feeling confident? I'm feeling good, yeah. Feeling ready? <laughs> well, here's the first one. My name is a sweet thing, and I didn't really sing. I performed my debut single at the finals, and I think the audience were in denial. And now, when you say my name, you will definitely win this game. This year's? Last year's. Oh. Honey G? Yes, Honey G's the right answer. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Don't get too cocky yet. We've got a second one coming up. Ready? We were named the best boy band with millions of fans. We like to think we had the best song ever, but unfortunately we didn't stay together. We were five lads given a chance, but unlike JLS, we didn't dance. One Direction? Yes, it's One Direction! <laughs> Can get a bit more complicated now. My song was played everywhere with my big wavy afro hair. Wearing my sacks like a crown, bringing my funk all the way uptown. I was a runner up, but wow, I did a lot better than Ben Hanau. The one with the bushy hair, with the tight pants, crop top. <laughs> Getting there, Fle Fleuries. Fleuries is the correct answer! <laughs> yes. This is the last one to win the big prize. <laughs> Ready? We are four big lads repping Watford and living our dream. But who would have thought that our songs could achieve? Banging out some chart-topping tunes weekly. Dimelo had the iTunes chart peaking. Dressing in tracksuits, killing the game. What's next for us? Worldwide fame? I know. I'm feeling you. Raksu. Raksu is <laughs> correct! I didn't expect you to win, so <laughs> we're going to have to improvise some sort of prize. How about do you play Jenga? I'll give it a go. Yeah? OK, I haven't got the box for it. Just <laughs> carefully, just take, take that. I got shaking. Ah! <laughs> nah, I'm only kidding. I do have a prize for you, Russell. Here's this beautiful trophy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, the time has come for us to depart and you lot to get out of my house. I'm really kidding. I hope you had a great time in bed with me tonight. With special thanks to our guests, Wesley McGrath <laughs> and Russell Jones. <laughs> Here to play us out with a little song in the shower is Manda Seal. She has showcased her talent all over the world from singing in big bands to releasing music for big UK record labels. And here she is tonight with her song, Let the River Bring You Home. I've been Jack Norman, and thank you for being in bed with me. Take it away with Manda! Yeah. 